And again, good evening to one and all out there, wherever you are around the world, in Italy, India, in Iraq, who knows? There's nothing like growing up in a musical household, and I uh, I often uh, think about our young people. Uh, what they grow up with now, of course, is not music at all. It's it's horror. It's noise. And, well, it's uh, not only the music. They have no point of reference to anything. Zero. Uh, zero. Because if you go into, there used to be these things called pharmacies, and yeah. now there's Walmart and CVS. <laughs> And you be, walk into uh, yeah. a wall, and you walk into a Walmart. It's like walking into a big self storage unit. So they they have no point of reference to anything. They have no point of reference to dress. They have no point of reference to style. They have no point of reference to dignity. Do you, all you had to do is look upon the big news, making the news, and watching this clown Christie from New Jersey. Oh, he's unbelievable. Lack of dignity. Unbelievable. And then, and, and, but no more unbelievable than our commander-in-chief Obama playing golf. No more unbelievable than uh, Pelosi saying, uh, you know, what was that word about, uh, uh, how did she put it, suck? Uh, embrace the suck. Uh, Excuse about me? Embrace the suck. If anybody could Google it up. Put Pelosi, embrace the suck about, you know, sucking up and taking it in that this is what the government is doing. So suck it do, up. And, and, and you, li- you lo- listen to the video, you watch her and you see that she's a total sociopath. She's out of her mind. And, and so it, it's they, the young people have absolutely no point of reference from music to food to to culture to anything. And and the, and the and the worst part about it is, is that they were grown up at a time when their parents inflated them with these false egos that they're special and amazing. You hit on a number of things that I've been on for years as well: uh, dignity, integrity, grace, kindness, consideration. How about morality? Well, I'm getting there. Yeah, <laughs> morality underlies it all, really. Uh, responsibility, uh, accountability, the idea that there are other humans next to us who have feelings. Uh, the, these, these, this younger generation, and there are exceptions. There are some wonderful people. Oh yeah, some of them, great kids. Oh, yeah. some, some of them are listening right now, uh, but they know what we're talking about. They live in it. They know. And you're right. And and I don't. I don't have an easy answer for it. I don't. I'm not sure there is an answer for it because once a child grows up without that spiritual understanding of life and what it could be, how do you teach them that? It's not easy. Well, again, that's what a, that's what a renaissance is about. A la Romana e all'antica, in the yeah, grand yeah. manner of the yeah. Romans and the ancients. Yeah, yeah. That's what they said during the renaissance to describe the quality of their work. Look, I, got, I have a bunch of young uh, fellows working with us, and they're, they're totally dedicated, and they tell me all the time, they say that their friends are all hip to what's going on, and that the people that are in denial of my generation, you know, the baby bo- I'm from the first, you know, wave of baby boomers, and they became the biggest sellouts and hypocrites walking the planet. I remember when I was in college, there was this uh, this song, what was his name? I forgot the name of the guy, uh, Cat in the Cradle. Anyway, it was a song about, you know, the kid grows up, his father's never at the Oh, okay. I can't remember like either. Never at the, never at the uh, baseball game and on yeah, yeah, and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they were so anti-consumer. These are the people that invented huh, McMansions. They they have they have been totally they totally uh, got lockjaw when it came to the Iraq and Afghan atrocities that continue. So these young guys are telling me that my generation. Uh-huh. are the big hypocrites, and these young people know the score. But what the young people don't know is they don't know what style, grace, dignity. They don't They don't know from Billie Holiday or, or Anita O'Day or, or uh, Count Basie or Duke Ellington or Jimmy Rushing or Jimmy Lunsford. They have absolutely no idea of what music used to be from Gene Krupa to Cab Calloway. You go down the list, well, those people up had- and down. You know what the word is? They had class. They had class, and and they had talent. Well, and that too. You got a guy like you know uh, 
uh, uh, Louis Armstrong, you know, and the diplomat, they used to call him the world mm-hmm. diplomat. Mm-hmm. One great line, by the way, he's playing in front of the Queen of England, just to put things in perspective. And he turns around and he goes to her, hey, this one's for you, Queenie. Did he really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Louis could get it. Oh, he's yeah. the only man on the planet who could get away with that. Yeah, that's and be, really. I mean, get off this royal trip, you know. Yeah. And and yeah. Uh, that's like calling, I love everybody, you know, the, the prince of Saudi Arabia. What prince? It's a dictatorship. Grow up. And anyway, but you had all these people, <laughs> like Jack Teagarden, you know, they could sing and they could, you know, the guy was one of the great trombonists of all times. Yeah. And, and we don't have, we got, now we got this Miley Cyrus, Siley yeah. Myrus, whatever, that, whatever her name is, and, and, and this other, well, there, one, no, one there, little life have, after another. What we have really, unfortunately, are tattooed horrors as role models for too many of our young people. That's all these people are. And many of them have admitted that they have, quote, sold their souls to the devil for their success. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I wonder why they're saying it if it isn't. And it wouldn't surprise me in the least if it was. Something's going on. These, these, these are, uh, talk about empty vessels. Um, and you mentioned the names, the names. Glenn Miller, the Dorsey brothers. You could go on and on and on. On and on. Yeah, Benny Goodman, Artie Shaw. There you go. You know, and one right. after another, Frank Sinatra, you go down, up and down the list, one better than the other, and people, and then even going into the generation before me, you know, when you had, you know, you had great guys like Al Sears, you know, one after Tiny Grimes, Big Joe Turner, you know, beginning a rock and roll, you know, you know, rock and roll, little girls and boys did not begin with the Beatles or the Stones. They were doing bad renditions of American jazz and American rockers in the early days. I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I hated it. I was listening to Dave Brubeck, Ramsey Lewis. Uh-huh. You know, I'm listening to this stuff. What, what is this garbage? Actually, the British invasion killed American rock and roll. Well, and, and then the morons started smashing their guitars on the stage. Yeah, it yeah. became a whole freak show. And guess what? It still is. It's a bigger freak show than ever before. How low can they go? And it came, you said something very important. It came from England. What, what else is in England? Tavistock. Tavistock does what? Tavistock engineers societies and people. It learned from Edward L. Bernays. Tavistock Institute, of course, sets the entire social trends for cultures, for epochs and eras in our existence. They come and they go. And there is a lot to be said about uh, the rock and roll of the 60s and 70s being controlled and influenced by social planners and social engineering. So, can't prove it, but it, uh, it certainly adds up to me. And then we look today, what do we have? Miley Cyrus. You can start and stop right there. And if you find something that is more base or vile than that, uh, don't let me know, folks. I I don't want to see it. That's about as low as it gets. I'm looking at some pictures of some of these MRAP vehicles, M-R-A-P, that the Department of Homeland Security is giving to our, our local police forces. And I'm seeing some of these pictures are amazing. Uh, the front of the vehicle, these are armored vehicles, of course, say police on it, and the side says police slash rescue, like they're going to rescue in these things. They need these to rescue people. And then there's another picture of four or five cops coming around the front of them with their, I don't know what they are, M14, they're something, automatic weapons, and they're in full military combat gear. These are cops. And they get off on this. This is the biggest power trip they got. Now, they're coming around this vehicle, and they're aiming their weapons at an alleged or imaginary or a practice template target. And you wonder, who are these people practicing to kill? Who's, who's over here? The communist Chinese? Uh, Al-Qaeda? Uh, the Russians? No. They're practicing to kill us. And these vehicles are so ugly. If you ever want to see a symbol of an occupied country, look at these MRAP vehicles. And if your local police force has them, I I pity you. I hope you go to your county or city commission and start asking questions. 
What the hell do we need these for here? And why does it say rescue on the side? It should say death. That's what it's all about. Killing people. They're all trained to kill. So that's our, uh, our brave new world. We're actually, electronically, of course, way past Orwell. Orwell could not have foreseen this. I'm not talking about the MRAP vehicles. I'm talking about the NSA and surveillance and nowhere to hide and how all the new cars have uh, tracking devices that the automakers can actually track where you drive, when you drive it, your total mileage, and all the rest of it. Uh, it it is so beyond Orwell now, Gerald. I I don't. You know where can it end? I don't know. I don't see an end for it. One point six billion rounds of hollow point ammo for DHS, uh, and some people try to say, oh, it's just for practice. They don't use hollow point ammo for practice, friends. If you don't know, it's a joke. They use hollow point ammo to kill people. One point six billion rounds of it. You know the. Um it, it's not only people like you and I talking about this. It's the Wall Street Journal. He's even writing about the militarization of the American police force. And it's against... I, I want to make this really clear for everyone listening. I consider myself a true American. I believe in the Constitution. I don't need some jerk judge interpreting it for me. I'm not stupid. I know how to write and I know how to read. And I've been writing a long time. I don't need some little clown that's a, a political hack, judge appointed or elected, telling me how to interpret the Bill of Rights. And they've been stolen from us. And so you even have, as I said, the Wall Street Journal. This is certainly mm -hmm. not a left-wing magazine. No, no, no. Interesting. Yeah. Driven by martial rhetoric mm -hmm. and the availability of military-style equipment, like you were talking about, mm -hmm. from bayonets and M16 rifles to armored personnel carriers, American police forces have often adopted a mindset previously reserved for the battlefield. The war on drugs and more recently post-9-11 anti-terrorism efforts have created a new figure on the U.S. scene, the warrior cop. Yeah, the warrior cop. Hey, listen, pigs, I don't need a warrior cop. Servant protect, capisce? Warrior cop. Armed to the teeth, ready to deal harshly with targeted wrongdoers. That's who we are, wrongdoers. But you know who the wrongdoers are? Never. They're never. They're not Jamie Dimon, not the criminal group from J.P. Morgan Chase that spends billions of dollars in fines for, you know, misrepresenting <laughs> or, or mis-selling. Mm -hmm. not, for, not for John the Slime Corzine, the Goldman Sachs bandit, former governor and senator in New Jersey that robbed my money out of my segregated account. No, 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 you little men in your armored vehicles, you don't go after them. No, you just keep busting out. Our chops. Anyway, the story goes on to go on and say the warrior cop, armed to the teeth, ready to deal harshly with targeted wrongdoers and a growing threat to familiar American liberties. The Wall Street Journal, July 19th, 2013. It was in the Summer Trends Journal. Targeted yeah, wrongdoers. What, what's, stopping, what's stopping freedom mm -hmm. in America are the police. The police are nothing more than enforcers for the criminal crime bosses. They protect the politicians and the corrupt institutions that are robbing all our money. Where, and these yeah. cops are on the road. They get you for you don't have your, uh, your license plate light is out. Your uh, right turn signal didn't go on. Your left high oh, beam yeah. isn't on. Yeah. And they break our chops continually. These little guys, when they get that badge and that gun in their hands, boy, do they become tough.